General Robert E. Lee surrendered to General Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse, Virginia on April 9, 1865. However, there were a few small skirmishes and battles after that date. Most Civil War historians consider the Battle of Palmetto Ranch, which took place over a month after that surrender, to be the last battle of the Civil War. There are a couple more incidents that might lead some historians to dispute that fact. There was a small amount of maritime action after the Lee surrender and capture of the President of the Confederacy. The CSS Shenandoah was still capturing ships in the name of the Confederacy up until the summer of 1865 because the captain of that ship had not received word of the end of the war. Also, there was a very small skirmish at Hobdy Bridge near Eufaula, Alabama on May 19, 1865. There is some thought that one Union soldier died in that encounter, but no concrete documentation exists to prove or disprove that fact, so the general consensus remains that the Battle of Palmetto Ranch was the final battle. How could a Civil War battle occur over a month after the surrender ceremony at Appomattox Courthouse? And why did that battle occur in Texas, where small numbers of troops were stationed and few battles actually took place? It all seems strange, but here is a brief explanation of the battle with respect to the whys, but also the details of what actually took place during the battle. Both Union and Confederate leaders and their forces stationed near Brownsville, Texas, on the banks of the Rio Grande River, knew about the surrender that had taken place at Appomattox Courthouse. They had, in fact, been observing an unofficial truce since early in 1865. The waterways in the Gulf of Mexico around the Brownsville area were important in that they offered a good port for loading and shipping valuable cotton grown in the area. Union Colonel Theodore H. Barrett had newly been appointed to command an all-black unit in Brownsville. He had never been involved in combat before, and many believe he coveted the opportunity to prove himself in combat in order to build his resume for future promotions. During the initial attack on May 12th, a few Confederates were captured, but the attack was not as successful as had been expected by the Union leaders because the element of surprise had not been achieved. The Confederates counterattacked with 100 men and drove the approximately 250 Union soldiers back and ended hostilities for the day. Both sides sent for reinforcements and the Confederates received an additional 250 cavalry along with six French cannons which swung the fight in favor of the Confederate troops. On that second day of the battle, there were a few fierce skirmishes, but eventually the Union forces retreated and many were captured. The battle was recorded as a Confederate victory, which is of little consequence since the war had already officially ended. Statistics regarding casualties are sketchy and unofficial at best. Historian Jerry D. Thompson of Texas A&M University pieced together the following casualty report for the Union side. Four killed, 12 wounded, and 101 captured. For the Confederates, there were no known deaths and just a handful captured. Because of the lack of credible historical data, these numbers vary from historian to historian. Union soldier John J. Williams of the 34th Indiana was the last fatality during the Battle of Palmetto Creek, and as such 
was the last combat death of the Civil War. The post-war reunification of the states started in the aftermath of the battle. Confederate President Jefferson Davis was captured and imprisoned on May 10, 1865, marking the end of the Confederate government. Many historians assert that the war ended when that government ended. One postscript to the battle. The Union commander, Colonel Barrett, brought charges against one of his senior commanders, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Morrison, for neglect of duty, abandoning his colors, and conduct prejudicial to good order and military discipline. In the court-martial trial, a Confederate, Colonel Ford, appeared as a witness for the defendant and helped absolve Morrison of wrongdoing and an acquittal was obtained. It is my opinion that Barrett was ambitious and egotistical and probably brought the charges against his fellow officer in order to deflect blame for the battle loss. If you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up, make a comment, click on the bell for notifications, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching.